Hello friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. In this video, we will discuss about the security realms and then we'll, we'll see that how we can add a user in WebLogic admin console. Okay, so now let us talk about what is security realm. The security realm is a comprised mechanism for protecting WebLogic resources. So as we know about, it's not about the WebLogic, whatever the software we use, okay, it comes with some default uh, authentication and authorization schemes, that means, when you log into the software or when you log into the, some uh, console of any software, then it's protected with certain username and password. So you have to provide the username and password and once you are authenticated that you get in in the software. Similarly, in the WebLogic as well, okay, because it is protecting your applications. So there is an inbuilt LDAP server in the WebLogic server, okay, which is used for storing your identities. That means username and password, okay which is specifically used when we uh, log into your WebLogic console or maybe sometimes the call could be different. Different in the sense there would be a direct call from the application, okay? So, and when their application is directly calling to your applications in your WebLogic domain, then there would not be an interface for providing username and password, but it is hard-coded somewhere in your application, which get authenticated in your domain. But it's all done with the help of the embedded LDAP server. Okay, and the entity that is there in the WebLogic server for dealing with the users and groups and securities, okay, that is called a RealM. So RealM consists of users, group roles and security policies. So that means every settings or every, uh, uh, the mechanism that we defined in the WebLogic related with the security is, is inside your security RealM. Okay, and the important point is you can configure multiple security RM, but only one active at any given time. So. WebLogic comes with a default security realm that is sufficient most of the time. But if you want to define your own security realm with certain more uh, uh, guidelines, okay, uh, or you can say the certain more policies, security policies, then you can defi define your own realm as well. You can create your own realm as well. But the one realm will be active at a time. Okay, so now when we talk about the users and groups, so we all are aware about the users, right? Whenever we log into our WebLogic console, we provide a username and password for login to your admin console. Okay, and then once we log into the WebLogic, there are a lot of activities that we can do, right? We can create managed servers, we can create clusters, we can deploy applications, we can create JDBC resources, we can create JMS resources, we can monitor the applications, we can start stop the servers, right? So, but in an organization, okay, there are different teams and then sometimes that all the teams have a different kind of access. Maybe some team is uh, like development team is working on the development of applications. They do need the access of the deployment of applications, but in parallel, we have a separate team for the, uh, for, for operations. That means they are only working on the uh, starting and stopping of the applications that basically done by the support teams most of the time in an organization. Okay. And apart from that, there could be a monitoring team who does the monitoring of your WebLogic servers, right? In that case, there could be a different teams according to, and according to their roles, they may need a different user with the certain privileges. Okay, so there would be an admin user that is, uh, uh, that is, uh, you can say it's, a, it's, 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 it's all about the, all the softwares, okay? Whenever a software we install, it comes with the admin user most of the time, okay? And then you can have, uh, then you have flexibility to create a different uh, users, okay? For different kind of a purpose. So as I said, specifically in case of WebLogic server, we by default when we installed and we create a domain, an admin user is created, okay? During the creation of a domain. But after that, if you have a different teams and you want to create different users for different users based on their roles, then you can create the different users from the admin console and then you can provide the specific role to that particular user. For example, you may want some users to do only the deployments. For some users you want, they can only do the monitoring of the applications. For some users you want that they can only start stop the applications but cannot do the deployment. So these kind of facilities that you can perform with the help of security realm where you can define different users and groups, okay? And then you can distribute the users to the different group of people. Okay, so when we talk about groups, a group is a collection of users who usually have something is common, such as working in same department in a company. For example, as I said, you may want certain number of users to be uh, having only the deployment capabilities, some users only to, to restart, uh, uh, start and stop capabilities, right? So you can create a group and then you can assign a particular role to that group. For example, for monitoring, you have a group called operators. Okay, so you can create a group and of users, okay? And you can assign all the users that particular group so that they will get the operator role. Otherwise, you have to assign this group, this particular role to each and every user. Okay, so group is a group. Group is just a set of privileges that we can assign to all the users in a one go. Okay, so now let us see how we can create the users. 
But before that, the default groups that comes with the web logic, one is the administrator. Okay, this is a default. Uh, you can say the user assigned to the user that we create during the configuration of our domain. Okay, it has all the capabilities to view the configurations, to modify the configurations, to deploy out any kind of applications, and then start resuming stock server. So these are the four functionalities that mainly we do uh, in the web logic where we do the uh, where we can see the configurations, we can modify the configurations, we can do, deploy the applications, and then uh, we can do a lot of other kind of configurations as well. Along with we can start stop and resume the application. So right? second role is called deployers. So this specific role is only for the deployment capabilities. For example, if you have a set of users and you wanted to uh, allow them only the deployment capabilities, then you can assign this role to that particular user or users. Similarly, if you want some set of users to start, stop, and resume applications, then you can assign the operator's role. And if you want some specific users to only monitor the applications or monitor the status from the WebLogic console, right? So that you can, you can assign the monitors. Role. So these are the four important roles that most of the time you are going to use in your applications. Apart from that, you have some more groups are there, okay? And But they are, the use of them, I would say, is very less, okay? For example, app testers. So app tester is used for accessing applications for testing purpose that are running in administrative mode. So if you have a, a server which is in admin mode, okay, then you can use this particular uh, group to assign certain number of users. Those are doing a testing when your servers are in admin more cross domain connectors is used when 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 any kind of a call is required from one domain to another domain okay when we have a cross domain interconnections cross domain communications then this particular role is helpful in that case admin channel users are access the admin channel okay so if you have enabled the admin channel then this role particular role is is important for you okay for the users an Oracle system group. So that is an asset identity on behalf of users whose WS security tokens that has been authenticated. This is a bit advanced option and that you can be able to understand this one once you will do a study of IDM and then OEM and then uh, certain kind of a security software that comes from the web uh, from the Oracle, maybe from the, some other vendors as well. But important is that you have to understand the meaning of asset identity. And then when we talk about the security to tokens, okay, but as a beginner, Okay, uh, you uh, really don't need to bother about these roles. Okay, you can just focus on the four roles that I have highlighted. That is for administrators, deployers, operators, and monitors. Administrator is will give you the full capability. Deployer will give you the only the deployment capability. Operators will give you the start and stop capabilities, and monitor will give you only the view the configurations or view the status of your applications from the admin. Console. Now to create a user, just you have to go to your admin console, click on security realms. After that, just click on the name of the realm, which is the default realm is my realm. After that, you click on the users and group. Once you will click on users and group, there will be two sub tabs that is called users and groups. So first click on users. It will display you the, the default user. Those are there in your logic console. Okay. Then <clears throat> Yeah, there's another, another uh, uh, tab that is called groups. So once you will click on groups tab, it will list you all the groups those are there. So all the groups we have discussed so far in the previous slide. So all those groups are there, right? So if you wanted to create a new user, just click on the new, okay? When you click on the users tab, then click on new user, okay? And then the parameter that you need to provide is the name of your user. For example, I'm creating this particular user for only for the deployment users who can only do the deployment, okay? So I will put the name as deployer. Description I will give you to deploy applications so that if you go to console and look for the user, so you can understand from the description what is the role of this particular user. Provider is you can choose a default authenticator, which is the inbuilt LDAP server of your WebLogic server, okay, which has all the security implementations. And then you provide the password for your user. So once it is done, click on save and then you will see the user listed under the users tab, deployer, right? After that, you have to create a group. So for creating a group, again, you click on the group tab. And after click on the group tab, just see select the, uh, your uh, particular group which you wanted to enable. So once you will uh, click on the groups, okay, it will list you all the groups on the left side, available groups, okay. Now I, ha I have created this user only specifically for the deployer role, right? So I will select the role as deployer, okay, and then take it on the right side. Okay, so I'm taking only the deployer group. That means that I have created a user deploy, deployer and I'm assigning the role deployer so that the user can able to have the capabilities of only the deployment of applications. Nothing apart from that one. Okay, then click on save. Okay, your settings will be saved in that case. Okay, now 
you try to log in with that particular user from the WebLogic console, provide the name as deployer, and then give the password. Okay. And after that, you see that you are able to log in with that particular users. And after that, try to start stop the applications or try to do the modif to modify the configurations that it will not allow you to do any kind of modifications. It will not allow you to do the uh, start stop of your servers. But yes, it will only allow you for the deployment of applications. This is all about the users and groups and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.